Welcome to the second episode of Under the Influence, the series where we invite your favourite skaters to talk about their favourite skaters. On this episode, we have Alex Burston. Alex is one of my favourite UK skaters of all time. I've had the pleasure of hanging out with him, street skating a few times, hanging out at Unit 23 Skate Park and various events in the UK and abroad. He is an absolutely lovely guy, but on top of that, he is a phenomenal skater. He has got an exceptionally smooth style. It's got this kind of really old school 90s, like really tucked down feeling to it. It's also got just a lot of character and a little bit gritty, which I really like. He has one of the best true top soles of all time, which he has demonstrated in multiple sections, including his local skate section his Elite Series section, and God knows how many others. On top of that, he is exceptionally technical, which was displayed in his ground control section, where he did a number of true spin topside grinds on handrails, both natural and unnatural, which to this day I still find mind-boggling. He is also very handy around a skate park and knows how to throw out multiple spins, flat spins, high airs and everything just looks flawlessly smooth. If you know anything about Alex, you'll know that he's a massive Wu-Tang Clan fan. He is a really big fan of anime and loves martial arts, loves things like yoga and just really embraces lots of kind of different cultural lifestyle things and adopts them into his everyday life, whether it be through stretching every day to make sure that he stays healthy, whether it's through his vegan lifestyle, just trying to eat as healthy and as responsible as possible. And he's just a really interesting guy who just tries to absorb as much as possible. I really enjoy his company and I'm really looking forward to speaking to him. Before we hear from Alex, I just want to give a massive shout out to my Patreon supporters. They are listed on the screen now. If you want to support this channel, the best way to do it is by subscribing to the Patreon account. There's loads of videos on there, way too many to mention. Get involved. Also have this t-shirt for sale. There's only a few left in large and extra large and shipping in the UK is free and international shipping is £5. So yeah, pick one up. Now that I've done my annoying little spiel that sickens me to the core every time I do it, let's hear from Alex. The biggest part of my childhood was, was admiring a good friend of mine, uh, Fraser Watson, for sure. UK is probably one of the one of the best to ever come out of the UK. Arguably, obviously, because there's so many fucking crazy heads out there. Um, Fraser Watson, man, like, yeah, that was that first one of the first Unity magazines I picked up was he was in there. It was. I can't remember what issue, but it was, I know it was the California one. I feel good from the I yeah, crazy. What, so, so I remember just, and I think that was the first thing I saw of him. Um, he was doing like, I saw a recap of it the other day. He was doing like a back fast slide down some way, down a handrail. Yeah, like some bench up to like some up ledge thing. And I honestly can't remember much about that. I just remember always after that it was like he was one of my favourite skaters and I remember seeing him at competitions with big ass baggy clothes with like five t-shirts on two pairs of trackies fucking ragged out hair just going in and then just busting out just doing gnarly shit and it was yeah and then I think just from there I just watched watched as much as I can of him and I was just, I was definitely a, a grom at that, at that stage. I was like fan, fanny, I was a fanboy, like, oh, it's crazy, get your autograph. I remember getting his autograph and shit. And, uh, yeah, and then, it, and then it, well, you know, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't, well, I definitely wouldn't have been on BHC because he was the one who told Mark Treble, and he was like, you need to grab this kid. You need to get, get bursting. 
basically, I don't know exactly what he said, but um, I've got a lot, a lot to thank for Fraser in that sense. It was, yeah. And then through, through Treble, who spoke to Wagner all them years ago about getting me on Razors. So can you see how that, that evolved? And that, but yeah, I'm just, yeah, fucking, what is it, yo? That Enigma. The Enigma one, that was one of the, that was one of the epic ones with the, like, the Superman drum and bass tune. Yo, that, that was heavy. And it wasn't a very long section, but it was like, Jazz as well, man. So it's really hard to like say who's your favourite, but yeah, it is definitely definitely Fraser. Um so big up to Fraser, I'll tag you into this when it's out, Fraser, and you fucking be like, fuck off, Alex. Don't even fucking skate anymore. <laughs> I definitely ran into him not long after that. I probably ran into him before that at a comp. I can't remember which way it went around, but I remember, yeah, I do remember a few times running into him, but that was when I was super young, so I never really chatted to him. But he actually, he actually used to live in Chesterfield, I believe. And then when I was like, maybe I was like thirteen, he moved back up to Manchester. I think that's where originally he might have. I think I have his parents from there or something. But and that's kind of when uh, I started skating with him, and it was just like, wow, fucking, this is crazy. And then. um yeah, just from there, we just became friends. And, like, he took me under his wing along with, obviously, the rest of the other Manchester heads. And um, well, now he, now he lives around, I think, Salford. He's a, he's a Salford head. I'm a Stockport head. It's the other side, pretty much. Under warranty for at least 90 days. I have one. If in that time frame there's a problem, please let us know. Before you start, there's a few details. Yeah, I remember this time. I can't go into too much detail, but <laughs> there's this drop rail. And, uh... There's more to it. Like I said, I can't really say. But the security was coming. And I had a front five didn't he? he was like, you need, you need to savannah that. And I'll give you a tenner. All right. And I'll give you a tenner when I get back to my house. I left the money at home. So, um, yeah. Anyway, security guys was coming. I was like, fuck, I couldn't do it for about 20 minutes. I kept going up and down, up and down the rail. Couldn't do it, couldn't do it. And the security guy was coming a little, whatever a year, however old I was. Fucking just busted this first ever Savannah down my little down this little drop rail. Well, it was a fairly decent drop rail. Not only did I used to look up to him, he became a very he became a good friend and uh, got up to all sorts of madness with him and. I remember him once wanting to batter me because I was a little shit and fucking, yeah, I, I think if I was going to be scared of anyone, it would be Fraser. <laughs> I was like 16 or something and he's like, you know, I want to fucking batter you, I want to knock you out. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, man. No, no, I was just, <laughs> that's another story. He's hardcore, Fraser, man. He's hardcore. One of the most hardcore people I know to this day. Like, and I don't know if you see him on his socials. Not many people. And you probably only see him if you know him. He's like learning piano and stuff. He's uh, into philosophy. He reads a lot. A very clever guy. Very, you know, he's he's gone through skateboarding stage, smashed skateboarding, like pretty like really got really pretty pretty good at it. Like I remember speaking to you before the uh, reflections in concrete when he went through his. Uh, Joy Division stage. But even that was that, like, yeah, sick. But yeah, fucking sick. Every, everything from all the BHC sections to just that, like, yeah, fucking big up, Fraser. Thank you for your influence, my mate. The disaster TTP on that school in California. I've actually been to real. I can't remember what school it's called. You might remember the name. Fucking okay, everyone knows that shit. The, the one that Connor O'Brien, Four Fifty Batroyd. The one that oh, fuck. Nick, 
Nick, Nick, Nick, Raise, uh, Remedies, Nick. I forgot his second name. I'm bad, I've oh. met him as well. He's... So yeah, Nick Woods did the Tumor Zoo, Connor O'Brien, 450 back row. I can't remember who did what else on it. But yeah, Fraser TTP, no paps, no fucking around. Like, apparently, he just went up there and was like, yeah, I'm going to do it. Because I spoke to him about it and apparently, uh, I think it was Charles Dunkel. He was at someone's house and uh, he was like, oh, he's in the car or something. And he was on the way to this school and he's like, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chew top on it. Being Fraser, being Fraser, I'm going to do that. And Charles Dunkel, I think it was Charles Dunkel, what Fraser said. He was like, no, you're not. And he's just like, Probably just said nothing like, all right, well, yeah, watch. And I went and did it. But yeah, that was like, yeah, that was heavy shit. CTP was one of Fraser's, like, signature, not signature, you know what I mean? It was his his favourite trick. That's mm -hmm. how I knew Fraser. When I started, I was like, yes, TTP. That's where I got my influence from the TTPs from anyway. I used to skate with him, so it was, excuse me, it was like one of them where, you skate with people, you pick things up without realising. Um, maybe it was more his mindset because he helped me kind of grow in a lot of ways, being just like, just fucking do it, Alex. Like, just like, do you know what I mean? So it's like, he probably helped me a lot more with the mindset as well. But the TTPs, man, he used to just get so low, so low on them things, man. Just, just, it just, it just you know, when you just jump up where your legs go up and your body doesn't and you just sat down on that TTP. That's when I, when I seen him doing that and I was like, yeah, I want to do him like that. <laughs> well, definitely. This was a hard one, really. But then if I think about it, back when, 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 back when, it'd be Dom, Dom Sagona, man. Dom Sagona. Definitely. The first time, I mean, he have a section in Forest Fire. Right, so I didn't even know that was Dom Sagona before I knew it was Dom Sagona. So I watched <laughs> my first ever proper, wow, that's Dom Sagona, was uh, Sell Your Soul to Roll. Um, that was because that was just probably because that was the first DVD that I ever owned. I, I had videos, but I was kind of too young and naive to even pay attention to anyone's name. It was weird. Like, I'd watch Brain Fade Gone, I'd watch Forest Fire, Forest, Forest Fire. My friend brought them videos around and we'd watch them constantly, constantly. I'd borrow the videos. I never really paid attention to the names, but then um, when Sell Your Soul to Roll came out, and uh, I watched that, and like, Don was definitely definitely my favourite in that. Just the, the first trick, even when he, that's the first thread the needle like, I've ever seen. And I was just like, what? What's, what's he doing? <laughs> like, and he was mad creative, but in like a weird, not weird, but, you know, in a different stylish kind of drunken master, don't give a fuck, cool hip-hop type drum and bass way. Do you know what I mean? It was cool as fuck, man. And the clothes he's wearing, it is like baggy pants, fucking... Sagged out shit, fucking hat, t shirts on his head and shit. I remember doing that. I remember doing that. I remember like seeing him, and then I remember seeing other people do it, but mainly Sagona. It's probably only after Sagona did it that I saw other people doing it. And I started doing it, going to the skate parks, out street skating. What t-shirt can I wear on my head today? <laughs> just remember the five four. It's just that it's like that one. He does it over like a plant pot with the tables. Like he does like an abstract like bio almost five forty, but with his leg going over it, you know, instead of your leg wrapping around or letting your body take your legs, it's like his legs were taking his body, like he was kicking. And I uh, I was just like, I want to do that shit. <laughs> I want to do that. Like, I want to, I want to do. That. I want to look like that when I'm doing it, and I want to do it now. Let's let's go skiing. <laughs> I 
I was going to say the um, you know, it was a funny little story. Like obviously he was on BHC. Um, I, th- I think he was like kind of after I was on Flow. I'm not. I, I think so. But anyway, I remember. <laughs> yeah, obviously a childhood hero, and then I can't. I think I met. I think he flew over to Treble to Bristol, and I met him. And I was just like, like Treble was like, yeah, Dom Dom Sagona's going to be on the team. I'm like, what? What? What the fuck? And I remember like one of the first times I ever met him. I think I'd met him before. Again, my memory's so fucking whatever. But I remember getting in the car and we picked him up, and I was in shotgun in Treble's car, right? And I and Dom was like, get in the back because I was this little kid, and I was like. Nah, man, I call shotgun. I'm in the front, just being the little mank, being the little mank kid that I am, you know. Just like, no, I'm in the front, like. And he's like, dude, he's like, you're lucky to even be here, man, like right now. Get in the back, and I was like, all right, John. Because Dom was, Dom was one not to hold back back in the day as well. He was quite he was quite a ruthless fella. Do you know what I mean? I mean, he didn't give a fuck, really. I, but, yeah, I very much looked up to him. And I've met him loads of times since then. And he's a fucking legend. And, uh, yeah, fucking good guy, man. Good guy. It's just crazy how you, you can look up to these people and no matter if you just keep doing what you're doing. I mean, I met him. I met all my favourite people. I've become friends with them, and it's crazy. It's crazy, but yeah, it's it is pretty freaky if you think about it. The universe has got a strange way of working, man. It makes you question, like, is this even real? <laughs> like, is it? Am I in the Matrix now? Obviously, tongue in cheek, but it's beautiful. It's just it actually gives hope to a lot of my en- endeavours, I guess you'd say. Makes you realise, like. Just keep doing this shit. Keep keep on doing whatever you're doing because you know there was love. There was only love that I was putting out towards them geezers, and I met them. Do you know what I mean? Became friends, and yeah, yeah, it's fucking it's beautiful, beautiful stuff. And I was just thinking about the uh, this M1 section. Is it like mad, mad edited? I fucking loved it. I love it. It's brilliant, and uh, some some like crazy like drum and bass like alternative like robotnik kind of. Beat and it's just dumb style and that yeah it was brilliant mate. I watched that again last night because I like oh, it was two nights ago actually I recapped because I knew we was having this conversation. That drunken master type style. Even though he wasn't, I don't know, I don't think he was drunk, I don't think he was drinking, but he had that type of looseness to him where he could just, his body, he'd just land shit because he was, he's just so ninja with it, like, so sick. USD tour man, USD tour video. Damn, I, I might get in trouble for even mentioning USD this much. <laughs> Don't sack me, Wagner. <laughs> I've got a razor jumper on. All right, chill out. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. Obviously, tongue in cheek, man. It's all banter. <laughs> Make that video. Man. It's art, It's an art form. Without it, it's like it's just this creativity, the way he expressed himself, and then like, there was no apologies about it. Like it's like, yeah, I've done that now. This is it. This is. It's, you could tell he was having fun. Do you know what I mean? You can tell he's just. It's like wild, but not too wild. Fucking yeah, it's top, top notch, top notch. Dom, again, thank you for your inspiration. I just, it was just mad, like, the first, I, mem- I just remember being, like, at spots of him, and just him skating, and I mean, just being like, I don't even need to skate, I just watch. <laughs> I just remember, yeah, 
the, the energy, the vibes, they're just the guys, the guy's a legend, man, and I still still look up to him. So same with Fraser, so Yeah, I've actually been thinking I'm gonna probably bring a section out pretty soon where it's gonna be completely out of the norm from my normal stuff. Just completely I'm just gonna start doing weird shit. I'm just gonna bring this I might even call it stranger than ever. <laughs> I've actually been sat on that for a while, man. I've, I've, I've honestly, I've been thinking about that for a while. I'm not, I've not really planned anything, but it's been in my head. Yeah, strange, and obviously raises is stronger than ever. Just stick an A where they always, Alex. Strange and never get me. You know what I mean? I'm working on this thing right now, but in between that, maybe I'll start playing around a bit more. But it's one of them where, at the moment, I'm just like, right, I still want to do this. And that's a big trick. So I'm going to save my energy. And I'm not going to fuck around. I'm going to get warmed up. Then I'm going to go and do the big trick. And then by the time I've done the big trick, I'm like, fuck, man, I'm done today. <laughs> <laughs>